I'm going to talk to you today about Satan's favorite tactic. What do I mean by that? His favorite tactic to damn people to an eternity in hell, like the flames here. I'm going to show you what the Bible has to say, not my opinion. Turn first to Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to show you that Satan has been using this exact same tactic for thousands of years, and he will continue to use it on into the future. Very interesting. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. God never said that. You go back through Genesis chapter 2, God never said that. She adds to the word of God. Remember that. Lest ye die. Verse 4. And the, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. God said, Ye shall surely die. Satan adds just one little word. Just adds one word. Not that much. Ye shall not surely die. Hmm. Verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Hmm. Now, you can say a whole lot about this, but I'm going to just focus on one thing. What was the sin that was committed there? What is the uh, tactic that we see? Oh, just the same tactic that the devil's used for thousands of years. You say, what is that? Right here. Addition. Addition. Ye shall not surely die. Neither shall ye touch it. God never said, neither shall ye touch it. But you see, by Eve adding to the Scriptures, by Satan adding to the Scriptures, they're saying that they're smarter than God. And I'm going to show you today in this study, this is the same tactic that the devil has used for thousands of years to damn countless billions of people to hell. If he can get you to add to the Scriptures... You'll go to hell forever. Let me show you a few other verses of Scripture here. Then I'll go over some different groups. Next, let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. And we, I mean, this is a major study. You could go through all the Bible and look at time after time after time where people add to what God tells them to do. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Do you trust God? Do you trust His Word? You say, well, yes, but I think that there are some things that we could put in there, and I think that there are some other traditions that we could bring in, and some other sacraments, and some other... We'll be getting to those in just a minute. Every word of God is pure. He doesn't want you adding to it. You say, how do you know? Verse 6, Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Who's the father of lies? Satan. Hmm. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. If God says it, uh, that settles it. That's final. It's finished. When you start adding to it, you're saying that you're smarter than God. And in reality, you're going to be found out to be a liar. Go to Revelation chapter 20. All the way back to the end of the Bible. Revelation chapter 20, verses uh, 7 through 10. Here you get the whole way through the church age where we currently are, Old Testament, New Testament. You're there towards the uh, end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Satan is bound, put in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. At the end he comes out, and this is what happens. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. 
the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right. Now, again, huge amounts of study could go into this whole thing, the premillennial reign of Jesus Christ, but is what you're seeing here the end of it. But the whole point is, Satan is bound, put in a bottomless pit. The people are living a perfect life. They're getting along with animals, wild animals and things, perfect climate, perfect food, all kinds of things. Jesus Christ physically ruling on the earth for a thousand years uh, from Jerusalem. I mean, it's, it's going to be a wonderful time, the millennial kingdom. And you would think these people that have everything would be completely satisfied. And yet, what is it that Satan uses to deceive them? Jesus has had you people there in, in, in bondage for a thousand years now. Um, don't you know that you could have more? Hey, Eve, you're in the Garden of Eden. You have a perfect climate, perfect everything else. You're getting along. It's just going to be like the Millennial Kingdom in the future. But, you know, you see, everything's perfect, Eve. But wouldn't you like to have a little bit more? That's what's there. And what's the final condemnation against sin in the Bible? Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 through 19. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and maketh a lie. Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Hmm. At the end, when we go into eternity, liars are without the city. They're down in hell burning, the lake of fire burning. I'll say it that way there. <clears throat> Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The Bible ends with a warning. Don't add to the book. Don't subtract from the book. So what does Satan do? Let me show you how this whole thing works out. I'm going to go over a bunch of groups here that like to add some things to the scriptures. And I'll just use, uh, I'll use black, I guess, because they're all just wicked sinners. First of all, we have the Roman Catholics. What do they do? They take the Bible and they say, okay, we are the ones that gave the world the Bible. We, we are the ones who, you know, the world received the, the, the sacred scriptures are the property of the Catholic Church. You say, oh, great. Then it's uh, the Bible is, they're the ones that they, they follow the Bible completely and they don't need anything else, right? No, because they, uh, do it this way, they add, the little red plus there, tradition. I'll say traditions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> have you kept the seven sacraments? Do you have holy orders? How about the Pope? How about a, a nun, a monk, monastery, convent? Go down through the list. The Blessed Eucharist, the transubstantiation, that all this stuff. Uh, the Bible's not enough. You have to add traditions. I'll give another one. One of the more deceptive groups 
which comes from Roman Catholicism too, I might add. You say, what is that? How about a Trinitarian? Okay. Here's another good one. All right. You say, what, what do they have? Well, they have a belief in the Bible. But you see, they have to add at least six different words to make their system work. Okay, you say, like what? Uh, God the Son, God the Spirit. There's two. Persons. There's three persons in the Trinity. Okay, that's the third thing that they have to add. The Bible never says persons. Then they have to say Trinity. All right? Then they have to say that they are one in essence or one in unity. And you can go on and on and on. There's a lot of things that they have to add. And they'll say, well, the Bible teaches... The Bible teaches the Trinity. Uh, nowhere in Scripture is the Trinity taught. And I'll grant you there are people that, that have said it. I used to say it ignorantly. I would say Trinity uh, when trying to refer to the biblical Godhead. Uh, but this thing, this teaching that there are three different beings in heaven and they all share one title of being God is ridiculous. Um, the Bible says that man is made in the image of God. Um, there aren't three Brian Denlingers. All right? uh, there's one Brian Denlinger. You say, well, then how does, how does that work? I have a body, I have a soul, I have a spirit. God has a body, soul, and spirit. You see? The body, soul, and spirit can separate. It's what happens when you die. All right? When you die, your body goes down, your soul and your spirit go up to be with the Lord. All right? When Jesus died on the cross, his body died, but his soul and his spirit, the Father and the Holy Ghost, they didn't die. You understand? All right. There's there's another group that adds to the scriptures, and they say, well, well, uh, you know, we have to put these things in there to make sense and, and and to make sense of the scriptures. No, you don't. You can just believe the scriptures as they are. Again, can you teach the Trinity without adding? No, you can't. You cannot teach the Trinity teaching without adding to the scriptures. That's how you know it's one of Satan's tactics. All right. Next we have Islam. They will take parts of the Bible, the Old Testament and things like that. They, I'm not saying that they believe it completely, uh, but they'll take certainly Old Testament names and characters and things. And even New Testament, they'll talk about Jesus <coughs> being a prophet. Um, but that's just all he is. He's just a prophet. Whereas Mary gets a whole chapter dedicated to her. But they take the Bible and they add the Quran. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Next we have the Jews of today. They take the Bible, the Old Testament, and then they add the Talmud. I could say a lot of rabbinical tradition as well and things. But again, you see, they're all adding things to Scripture. And the Jews, God's not done with them yet. Certainly he has future plans for the Jewish people. But the whole point of the time of Jacob's trouble that's coming is because these Jews have added unscriptural things to the Old Testament. Instead of, instead of uh, accepting the New Testament, they've gone and they've added a bunch of traditions of men. Very similar to what the Catholics have done. All right? And ironically, what Islam has done as well. Now I'll give you another one that might be kind of surprising to you. How about evolutionists? You say, well, they, they reject the Bible. Uh, no, they don't actually. 
say, what are you talking about? Of course an evolutionist rejects the Bible. If you're an atheist out there, you're saying, this is ridiculous. Of course I reject the Bible. Um, no, you don't actually. You see, no evolutionist that I've ever met believes it's okay to just go out and kill people. If you see somebody that's undesirable, you just go murder them. You just go kill them. You know, uh, no evolutionist believes that. They certainly believe in moral rights and whatever. Where'd they get it from? It's not from evolution. Evolution is the strongest survive. Survival of the fittest. That's all evolution is. Where'd they get it from? They got it from here. The Bible. But they take the Bible and then they put... Uh, science. And I'm going to put that in quotations there. Science. Um, because in reality it's oppositions of science falsely so called. Like 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 20 talks about. It's not real science, okay? It's religious philosophy is what the whole thing is. But you see, again, the evolutionist comes along and they say, well, there are certain parts of the Bible that would be commendable and moral and whatever else. Um, but then they'll turn around and they'll say, but there's other parts of the Bible that are evil and horrible and people being killed and whatever else, thereby proving that they're hypocrites because their own system of evolution glorifies killing and one species being stronger than another or whatever else, one race being stronger or superior to another, why would you have a problem with the, kill, the killing that goes on in the Bible then? Or uh, the fact that God's against sodomy in the Bible. Um, evolution is against sodomy or homosexuality if you want to call it that. Evolution is against homosexuality. You say, why? Well, the evolutionist would say that homosexuality comes down through the genetic code and whatever else and people are born homosexuals with that predisposition. Um, that's stupid, okay, because it takes a heterosexual couple to produce a homosexual in their system. Well, then the homosexual cannot get married or breed, so that gene that came down through dies out in one generation. You say, well, no, they, they can still breed, they can still, then they're not homosexual, you see. Think on that one for a little bit. All right, next we have, uh, I'm going to run out of paper here if I'm not careful. Mormons, they'll take the Bible, but you got to add something to it. Got to worship your Lord Satan. Bible plus the book of Mormon, given by the angel Moroni, the moron angel. Joseph Smith is our prophet, you see, and, and he came along and he took the Bible, but he led us into all truth with his Book of Mormon. Sure he did. Now he's leading you to hell by adding to the scriptures. Same tactic Satan has used for thousands of years. How about the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses? You say, what do they add? Well, they add their uh, watchtower, Bible and Tract Society. You must be subservient to that system, and you have to be a good little Jehovah's Witness and going out and do what they tell you to do. All right? You can't interpret the Bible for yourself with the Holy Spirit guiding you. No, you have to be connected to the uh, watchtower and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Again, another group that adds. Here's another good one. How about uh, Protestants? You say, well, Protestants are, are sola scriptura. Sola scriptura. We're Bible believing in all matters of faith and practice. Really? No, actually, you're not. Protestants, again, add to the scriptures with more traditions. Specifically, because I already kind of kicked the traditions thing up here with the Catholics. They'll add uh, church buildings and all the stuff that goes along with it. You better be in church every time the doors are open. 
Find a good church in your area. Be active in your church. Give your money to your, lo to your local church. Uh, without your church, without a church in your life, you're, you're going to be isolated, and you're going to be this, and you're going to be that, and whatever else. No man's an island. You can't be a hermit Christian. You, the whole deal. Mm -hmm. um, there are no church buildings in the New Testament for Christians. So what the Protestants do is they come along and they say, we, we protest things that the Catholic Church are doing that are unscriptural. And so what are we going to do? We're going to take the church buildings from the Catholics. The holy cathedrals and the temples and whatever else. Which is exactly what they do. Okay. Next we're going to go to Bible scholars. What do you say? What do they add? What, what would a Bible scholar add? Well, they add, what do I have written there? More than one authority. I'm just, okay. They, uh, so they'll take the Bible and they'll say, <coughs> one breath, they'll say that uh, we believe the Bible, we believe in sola scriptura. We believe the Bible, the scriptures alone. And uh, you say, oh, which Bible? Which version? Well, no translation can be inspired. Oh, okay, well, what's the scriptures? Then? Well, the, the Greek and the Hebrew. Okay, which edition? Which, you know, which one? There's a lot of different ones. There were 40 different Greek New Testaments and and in different editions and things, and Nestle's text has 28 editions and whatever. Well, only the originals. Have you ever seen the originals? No. What are they doing? They're adding themselves at the final authority. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. Hmm. And of course, you know, I'm running out of space here. You aren't going to be able to see any below this. I'll just stop there. But you can do Buddhists. You can do uh, uh, Hindus. I could put them on the list here. They'll take certain things from the Bible, steal certain things from the Bible, and then add other things. Uh, everybody will fall into this group somewhere. This is right here how the devil will deceive everybody that's ever lived. Right there. And it's kind of interesting if you look at the devil's name. What's he got right in the middle? Hmm. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. And you say, uh, as a Catholic, or even as a, some Protestant, you say, I believe in the uh, Holy Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What did you just make? Hmm. There are a lot of things in this life that are kind of hard to figure out, you know, and you just kind of look and you think, I wonder how that works, and you have questions, and why does God let good, bad things happen to good people, and blah, blah, you know, yeah, there's a lot of things like that you, you wonder about, and I wonder if that person got saved, and I wonder what heaven's going to be like, and I wonder, you know, and the eh, questions that you have and whatever else, but uh, one thing that's real easy to understand is um, the devil is who's behind this whole movement to add to the scriptures. And you can see it in every single false system out there. They all add to the scriptures. Every single one of them. Catholics. Just a review. They'll take the Bible. We believe in the Holy Scriptures, the sacred scriptures, but then they add all their traditions. The Trinitarians. Oh, we believe in the Bible. The Bible alone is our final authority. But then they add at least six words to make their system work. Okay? Um, God added His, or excuse me, God finished His word with a commandment to not add to the Scriptures. If He wanted to be called the Trinity, He wouldn't have waited until a hundred years after the Bible's finished to tell Tertullian to come up with the term. It would have been in His word. 
Okay? Then you look into the whole Trinitarian belief system, it's false. Islam, again, you know, however many hundred years or whatever else, a couple hundred years after the Bible's finished, all that, you know, God uses this guy Muhammad to come out with the real true thing and kind of outdoes a lot of the, or undoes a lot of the stuff in the New Testament and whatever else. I don't think so. It's adding to the scriptures. The Jews. Well, we have the Old Testament, but we don't want that New Testament, so we're going to add our own revelation, the Talmud. They have a time coming up, the time of Jacob's trouble, which they're going to pay for their bad decision. Evolutionists. Well, we want some of the moral stuff from the Bible. We want some of the uh, things and, and whatever else, moral laws and whatever of the Bible. But uh, we'll overthrow what we don't like with our uh, <coughs> science. Uh, no, it's religious philosophy is what evolution is. Mormons. We want the Bible, but we have to also have the Book of Mormon. And you have to come be part of our church. Uh, there's no salvation outside of the Catholic Church. I mean, oh, oh, excuse me, the Baptist Church, oh, no, uh, the Mormon Church. I wonder which one it is. It's called organized religion, people. How about the Jehovah's Witnesses? We have the Bible, plus we have the Watchtower. You see? I didn't. I forgot the right Bible here, but you see what I'm saying. Protestants, Scripture, plus our church buildings and all the other trappings that go back to Roman Catholicism. Adding to the scriptures again, Bible scholars, more than one final authority. They add things, Greek texts and authorities, and this rendering would be better translated in this lectionary says this, and that says that, and whatever, what, or lex, lexicon, excuse me. Um, you see what I'm saying here? This tactic has been used by the devil for a long time. It's his favorite tactic. If he can get you to add to what God gave you, then He can damn you to hell. I pray that you hold on to the Scriptures in the King James Bible and not mess around with any of this other junk here behind me. All right? Uh, that's what a Bible-believing Christian is. You say, well, I don't hold those. Okay, then you're not a Bible-believing Christian. It's just as simple as that. It's really not that difficult. Okay? So, that is going to be it. I pray you take heed to this warning. Thank you for watching.